All right, guys, let's jump right back into it and get the boost bypass valve reinstalled. We'll lubricate the O-ring here on this vacuum port. Then we'll go ahead and slide it back into the supercharger housing. Next, align the actuator rod from the vacuum diaphragm into the lever that operates the valve itself. You'll see that there's a little bit of a flat spot on the rod which slides into the lever, then you turn it so it can't come out. Next, we'll install the bolts that hold the vacuum diaphragm to the supercharger case. And finally, the bolt that holds the vacuum port into the supercharger housing. Next, let's go ahead and adjust the boost bypass valve operation. And to do this, you will see that there is a little stud that sticks out of the supercharger case. That is set by the factory. And then you just rotate the whole assembly until that flap on the lever gently touches the stud and then go ahead and cinch the bolts down. That is ideal adjustment and will make sure the valve is closed during wide open throttle operation. Now let's go ahead and test it out. We'll apply a vacuum gauge to the diaphragm and we'll apply a vacuum which shows that the lever opens all the way up and if this will be a idle, you know, high vacuum during idle or high vacuum during just cruise, this is open so that the supercharger creates no boost because you don't need it. And you can see the butterfly valve is wide open. Next, let's go ahead and refill the supercharger snout with the proper oil. We got this from Intense Racing. It's a special supercharger oil. And to refresh my memory when it's full, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, see how far below the hole it really is. Pretty much right at the bottom of the hole and make sure your rubber o-ring is intact. And go ahead and cinch it down. Next, let's go ahead and reinstall the PCV valve. And this one's only a couple years old, so I cleaned it in solvent and you can hear the rattle, which means it's operating fine. I put a new o-ring on it as well, because the old one was shot. Install the spring that holds it down. And then the cover with a gasket. Mine's in good shape, so I'm gonna reuse it. This is a source of vacuum, so if yours isn't in good shape, you need to replace it. Then we'll just go ahead and cinch down the two bolts holding the cap to the supercharger housing. Now for a big step, let's install the lower intake manifold. I'll start by applying a little RTV in the corner of each area where the head meets the intake manifold. Then I'll lay the seals in place on each end of the oil valley. Next, we'll go ahead and lay the intake manifold gaskets into place. There's a couple of pins that insert into the head, so you just cannot install them incorrectly. Then again, we'll put a little dab of RTV, once again, in each corner where the head is going to meet the intake manifold. Then we'll go ahead and carefully line up the intake manifold with the gaskets so that when you set it down into place, Hopefully, you don't have to move it around much. You don't want to smear that RTV all over the place. So make sure you get it lined up close. Once you're satisfied everything is close, you can start dropping the bolts in place and get them all started by hand. Then start torquing the bolts starting in the middle in a crisscross pattern. I like to take the final torque value, which escapes me at the moment, and go in three steps. And I'm going to finish these off at 14 foot-pounds for the final pass. Taking the opportunity while we've got things apart to replace the radiator hose going from the engine to the coolant tube on the driver's side. This one here I fashioned from scrap tubes about 10 years ago when I did the swap. And I've kind of been lucky it hasn't blown up. But thanks to a guy named Darth Fierro who has sinister performance. I'm not sure if he's still out there. Um, but he has contributed so much to information about the 3800 swaps on the different um, Penox Fiero form, etc. This is the hose that you use to modify for this to work. And uh, you just cut it off right here. That way you've got one nice molded hose, brand new. And here's our new hose installed. Just about perfect bends right up to the thermostat housing. Oh, we're getting closer now. Here's a big step. We'll go ahead and place the gasket on that goes between the supercharger and the manifold. 
And even though I have these plugged, if they were to ever leak, I just want the coolant to stay in that passage and hopefully not migrate towards the engine. So we'll put those in and now it's time to set the supercharger on and tighten it up. Put a little oil on the O-ring and gently slide this down into the supercharger. I do believe this is plastic, so you do not want to over tighten it. Now let's go ahead and get the throttle body put back on, starting with the gasket. Then we'll slide the throttle body into place. And it's pretty simple. It just has three nuts that hold it tight. And we're going to go to 89 inch pounds. Go ahead and plug in the mass airflow sensor, throttle position sensor, and idle air control valve. And go ahead and reattach the cold air intake. Guys, I'm going to put the fuel rail on, and I just can't do it. It just it looks so ratty. It's got years and years of kind of corrosion and grime built up on it. So I'm going to disassemble it clean it and paint it and put it back on. Okay, we're about to drop the fuel rail back in. Before, I just wanted to show you each one of these injectors, again, is perfectly clean. It has an O-ring. These O-rings are only a couple years old, so I'm gonna reuse them. If they're more than that, just replace them because they're cheap. And you do wanna put a little drop of oil uh, around the base of each injector and rub it on the o-ring so that it'll slide nicely into the aluminum hole in the head that it goes into. After that, it's just four bolts. One, two, three, four. Let's do it. Now in my mind anyway, cleaning and painting the fuel rail was well worth it. Similarly to the driver's side, this is the passenger side lower hose that I cobbled together out of two different size parts and I fabricated an adapter from the larger size to the smaller size about eight years ago. And this thing's been running on borrowed time, so I'm taking this opportunity to replace it. Again, a shout out to Darth Fierro, SinisterPerformance.com. This is the common hose to be used on the passenger side lower rear. It's a Daco part number, the E71030. Anyway, as you can see, it's not a direct fit. So here's what we have to do to make this hose fit, which has the larger size up here and the smaller size down here. I had to modify my cooling tube by cutting it off. Let's take a peek. All right, so I'm underneath the car looking towards the rear. Here's the passenger side frame rail. And the coolant tube comes up here by, in my case, the alternator. And I have cut it off right here. And now I'm going to bevel this edge so it won't cut through the new hose. I'm going to run a cloth down here with a little stick to sweep up any debris from cutting this off. And we'll just have this lower hose connect right to here. Okay guys, it's kind of hard to see, but it is installed and it fits beautifully with a modification to the coolant pipe. And I feel better knowing that this hose is brand new. And this one is going to the dumpster. Time to refill the coolant. And the good thing about this heater hose running up high is I've made it the fill point with this removable cap. And this way, it makes it fairly easy to get the air out of the system. Oh. Now for my favorite part of any engine modification, 